Morale, Wikipedia article audio. Morale, also known as esprit de corps, is the capacity of a group's members to maintain belief in an institution or goal, particularly in the face of opposition or hardship. Morale is often referenced by authority figures as a generic value judgment of the willpower, obedience, and self-discipline of a group tasked with performing duties assigned by a superior. According to Alexander H. Layton, morale is the capacity of a group of people to pull together persistently and consistently in pursuit of a common purpose. Morale is important in the military because it improves unit cohesion. Without good morale, a force will be more likely to give up or surrender. Morale is usually assessed at a collective, rather than an individual level. In wartime, civilian morale is also important. Esprit de corps is considered to be an important part of a fighting unit. Military In the workplace Psychoanalytic Roots In military science, there are two meanings to morale. Primarily it means unit cohesion, the cohesion of a unit, task force, or other military group. An army with good supply lines, sound air cover and a clear objective can be said to possess, as a whole, good morale or high morale. Historically. Elite military units such as special operations forces have high morale due to both their training and pride in their unit. When a unit's morale is said to be depleted, it means it is close to crack and surrender. It is well worth noting that generally speaking, most commanders do not look at the morale of specific individuals but rather the fighting spirit of squadrons, divisions, battalions, ships etc. Clausewitz stresses the importance of morale and will for both the soldier and the commander. The soldier's first requirement is moral and physical courage, both the acceptance of responsibility and the suppression of fear. In order to survive the horror of combat he must have an invincible martial spirit, which can be attained only through military victory and hardship. The soldier has but one purpose, the end for which a soldier is recruited, clothed, armed, and trained, the whole object of his sleeping, eating, drinking, and marching is simply that he should fight at the right place and the right time. Military morale is in a large sense inseparable from civilian morale because each reacts upon the other and both are in large measure based on fidelity to a cause but there is a certain kind of morale that is distinctly military. It begins with the soldier's attitude toward duty. It develops with the soldier's command over himself. It is a spirit that becomes dominant in the individual and also in the group. Whether the soldier has physical comforts or suffers physical hardships may be a factor but is seldom the determining factor in making or unmaking his morale. A cause known and believed in, knowledge that substantial justice governs discipline, the individual's confidence and pride in himself, his comrades, his leaders, the unit's pride in its own will, these basic things, supplemented by intelligent welfare and recreation measures and brought to life by a spirit of mutual respect and cooperation combined to weld a seasoned fighting force capable of defending the nation. In August 2012, an article entitled Army Morale Declines in Survey states that only a quarter of the Army's officers and enlisted soldiers believe the nation's largest military branch is headed in the right direction. They most common reasons cited for the bleak outlook were ineffective leaders at senior levels, a fear of losing the best and the brightest after a decade of war, and the perception, especially among senior enlisted soldiers, that the army is too soft and lacks sufficient discipline. Employee morale, in human resources, 
is defined as the job satisfaction, outlook, and feelings of well-being an employee has within a workplace setting. Proven to have a direct effect on productivity, it is one of the cornerstones of business. Freud saw the roots of esprit de corps as resting in the horizontal ties between members of a group, large or small whether sibling in a family, or the members of an army or church who had all put the same leader in vertical command, replacing their ego ideal. Envy and aggression within the group subsumed by the demand for equal treatment, and at the same time redirected against outsiders. Fritz Redl added that the role of leader could also be played by a figure who offered a joint solution to a shared social problem.